If you were thinking that TikTok's just a simple app for kids for lip syncing and dancing, then you need to think again. We're looking at TikTok, we may be banning TikTok. I've been an active user on TikTok for two years now and I'm telling you now that things are not what they seem. The UK government has banned the social media app TikTok from their phones. So if you were like me just a couple of weeks ago thinking that everything's okay with TikTok, you need to think again and definitely ask the question, is TikTok safe? So it's been widely reported across the world that a lot of governments are discussing whether they should ban TikTok or not. A couple of years ago, Donald Trump wanted to ban it completely. In the UK, the government has banned it from all of the government devices. And in India, it's completely and utterly banned. India banned the use of TikTok in their country in 2020. New Zealand has banned the installation of TikTok on devices connected to the country's parliamentary network. So if you didn't already know, TikTok is a Chinese company. It's been widely reported that they take a lot of data from their users, including things like even thumb strokes, to see how you react to certain things. It also takes a hell of a lot more information from the device than any other social media platform out there. Now, it was reported by Wired just last week that TikTok is about to spend £1.3 billion to evade bans in Europe. But some of the reasons as to why it needs to get banned are not as clear as some others. Now, full disclosure on this one, I'd seriously believe there's some good content creators out there using this platform and that they literally drop out videos that are very interesting. But there are those creators that literally understand the whole ins and outs of the app and use that to their benefit. Fake news, controversial subjects and sexual exploitation are among these. And the BBC, although they're not exactly the, the most reliable source of information, have just done a documentary on TikTok where some of the creators have actually admitted that they know that they're on the borderline of being right and wrong. However, they're after the clicks and that. So right now we are um, driving to Moscow, Idaho. We just flew out from Florida. This is a home where four students were brutally stabbed to death on November 13th in Moscow, Idaho. A reddish colored substance believed to be blood can be seen coming from Zena's room. It's a new type of journalism. It, journalism has changed. I actually can't believe she actually classes herself as a journalist, to be fair. Sometimes I can even post controversial things. I can post about information that some news companies would need um, confirmation about before posting. In this leaked screenshot from surveillance footage, it shows the girls speaking with Keely's ex. And in the corner is Adam and Jack S, also known as Hoodie Guy. TikTok does encourage people to participate more than other apps because you can just be sitting on your couch and make a video and then reach tons of people. There were so many victims that were created through internet sleuth videos like this. We have received threats and harassment um, and we didn't deserve that. But this by far is not the most hurtful content that's there. Girls are especially subjected to viral and popular trends that include facial and behavioral tics or manufactured and quirky behavior that they then subconsciously imitate in real life. And even my sons, I'm hearing things like, oh yeah, and daddy chill. And that stuff is just crazy. And it is present, you, can, you can't deny that. And why it might seem a little bit funny at first, there's actually a deeper level to this. There's hundreds of videos of people faking illnesses, for instance, Tourette tics and even autism. And it's quite easy to see that these kind of things are gonna create mental health issues in our younger generation. And it really doesn't stop there. People pretending to be taller than they are to get views. People pretending to be NPCs on these weird live streams. It's literally about all the likes, the follows, the popularity, and more importantly, gifts. But we'll get more onto that in a second. Butter. Mwah. Ooh. Mwah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I love you. See you in a minute. Yeah, it's the guy I feel like a queen. Mm -hmm. These short style videos have been proven medically to lower attention spans and decrease concentration. Now I've even seen this in myself, so it'd be silly to think that this is just affecting our youth. The amount of times I've actually sat there and been watching TV and flipped over onto something else, where I used to be a binge watcher. I literally used to watch series for fun. Now 
I can't watch one episode without flicking through my phone at the same time, looking for something else to pique my interest. I've even noticed that it's starting to affect my short-term memory. It's well known that this kind of stuff creates depression and anxiety when the users can't properly moderate their own attention spans. And also the susceptibility to some of the advertising that is very damaging, especially within the youth. Now you might think that TikTok is no different than shorts on YouTube or reels on Instagram, but you'd be very, very wrong. Most of the videos that you'll see on these other platforms are based on the users that you've followed and based on keyword searches and stuff like that. TikTok's algorithm primarily shows you popular and trending views that it's decided that you want to see. Now you might think, oh, well, what's the harm in that? You know what I mean? I'm going to see things that I like, but Upper Echelon put a video out a couple of months ago where he made a couple of accounts, 13 to 15 years old. These were test accounts and he found some crazy stuff. When you first sign up to the app, it's obviously going to try and find out what kind of stuff you like. And because these are short form videos and you're flicking through, it's going to find out within a good 10, 15 minutes some of the stuff that you're into. What Upper Echelon and others found when they did this and went through this process is that at some point they were subjected to either sexual or violent videos. And as you know, kids, when they see this, they're going to kind of stick on it a little bit and try and see what's going on. But the algorithm will look at that and think, right, this is what the user wants to see. And then it'll just play an onslaught of videos similar to that over and over and over and over and over again. Now, in contrast, say when you're uploading a video to YouTube, you'll get two levels of protection for children. Firstly, is it made for children? And secondly, should it even be shown in searches or feeds of children? And there's none of that on TikTok. The Wall Street Journal even reported on this and on their test accounts, they were given nothing but a never ending stream of sex and drug related videos and TikTok knew that these accounts were minors. In my opinion, you can't blame these youngsters for actually just being a little bit curious. But once they are that little bit curious and the watch time goes up on them kind of videos, they are literally served up more and more of this and sent down the darkest of rabbit holes. But it doesn't even stop there. Upper Echelon even reported on blatantly underage users that were broadcasting with little or provocative clothing on, offering viewers to spin round, jump up and down on the spot and other such things in exchange for gifts. And if you didn't know what gifts were, they're like kind of little logo-y things that are based on things in real life, for instance, a rose or a turtle. And each of these things has a different monetary value. Upper Echelon also reported that when he looked into most of the viewers in the chat and the ones that were actually engaging with these kids, most of them were older men. Now, what's even worse is that TikTok has actually become aware of this and will ban broadcasters for doing certain things. But now the users are actually using coded language to circumvent the things like fit check means that lift your top up or you forgot something. So they turn around, walk away and show their ass. And these kind of streams are full of requests on, on top of requests on top of requests. A lot of these users will then ask for a cash app or something like that, a way to pull these youngsters away from the platform so they can be exploited even further. So even if we were able to set aside the mental health issues, the societal dangers, and even the child exploitation, there's actually some things that probably fall more into my opinion, which I'm going to talk about as well. Now, I'm not trying to be awful here when I say this, but let's say, for instance, I want to make a YouTube video. I'll make a good video. I'll kind of spend a lot of time editing. I'll probably script out my video first as well. Whereas there's none of that when it comes to TikTok. And because you don't really necessarily need to do anything entertaining or even have any expensive equipment on TikTok, the entry for anybody getting involved in this is very, very low. Some people don't even have to show the faces because they'll just put a green screen up. Now, this is dangerous for loads and loads of different reasons. Because, for instance, there's mental health streams where you have these people masquerading as mental health professionals. But most of the time, these people are still going through it themselves. So they're not giving good advice. You've got to understand when you validate people in certain ways saying, oh, you're doing well, you're doing... No, they don't need that. And most of the time, the person that's running the live will want them to continue feeling this way so they keep coming back, which 
It's just absolutely disgusting. Now, one of the things that really, really annoy me at army groups, there'll be these kind of groups that are based on a tragedy that's happened, a child being disabled, or even being about bullying awareness. Group got everybody sucked in. And what I found was people that usually wouldn't have a voice or were not getting anybody in their lives and stuff like that would join these kind of groups to give themselves a little bit more clout a voice, something, a purpose on the platform even. And the owner of the group who's making a hell of a lot of money at the top of the chain knows that other people who are wise to this are going to come at them in things like videos and say, look, you shouldn't be doing this. And then the owner will make a video about said person attacking the group and sends all the other members after that account. One of these groups is even a bullying awareness account. One of the biggest observations that I made is that people are actually only getting 35% of the revenue when it comes from gifts. When the entry level for broadcasting is so low, you end up getting people just sat there chatting, gifting away money. I've seen many conversations talking about, oh, when I get paid my benefits, I'm gonna sort you out back, don't worry, and all this. And you'll be able to back this up because you'll see in the profile, let it say, single mum of three. And they're the ones gifting these people and they're just giving the benefits away. And most of that money is going in TikTok's pocket. Now, put me up against the post here, but a lot of the entry level people that's come on TikTok, they've got nothing to do because they're just sat at home with the kids and they're on benefits. So of course they're gonna sit in alive and pay somebody. But the thing is, they're only getting 35% of that money. The rest is going to a Chinese firm. So as you saw in the thumbnail, it was reported this week by Wired that TikTok is spending 1.3 billion pounds on trying to circumvent the bans that they're gonna get across Europe. But here's the mad thing about this. The 1.3 billion is to build three data centers in Europe. And this is to stop all of our information going over to China and being processed by their data centers. So it's all well and good that maybe we're keeping our data a little bit more to ourselves. But what about all the other stuff? What about the dangers to the society? What about the mental health issues? What about all the money that they're rinsing out of people on benefits? And more than anything else, what about this child exploitation? In my opinion, we can't actually even spend another day allowing this degeneracy into our society anymore. And hopefully we're gonna see some change very, very soon. But thank you very much guys for watching this video. This is going to be a bit of a series for me. So if you wanna see the rest of the videos, make sure you click subscribe. And until then, you take care.